Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you the difference between responsive and adaptive web design and share with you a top tip for how to optimize your website for all devices really easily. This is the first in my brand new series for how to make your website responsive. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the others. Now, let's dive in. Firstly, what is the difference between responsive and adaptive design? Well, RWD, which is responsive web design, takes the same content and transforms its size and layout to fit any viewport size, the viewport being the visible screen size. Whereas AWD, which is adaptive web design, displays completely different content that is built specifically for various device types. Now there are ups and downs to both. For responsive web design, some pros are that the content stays the same. There is no need for you to spend extra time designing multiple versions of a web page layout. Also, everything resizes automatically, as long as you're not using absolute units like pixels, which will make the design process much simpler for you. Some downsides, on the other hand, are that user experience and user interface can suffer. Your website visitor doesn't get bespoke user experience or an interface that's optimized for the device they're using. And accessibility can suffer as well. Clicking a computer mouse or trackpad is completely different to scrolling, swiping or tapping on a mobile. Another thing to consider is that loading times can suffer too. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, multimedia all take longer to load on a cell phone with a smaller CPU than it would on a computer. Then we have adaptive web design. Some pros are the loading speeds, which can be boosted by only loading a design that's been tailored to a specific device. It can really speed things up. You also get better user experience and an interface for your site visitors. They get a custom web environment made for each device rather than a generic approximation for different viewports, which can happen with RWD. The cons of adaptive web design though are time, energy and cost are far greater. You have to develop for multiple viewport ranges to allow for all device types and it's a long-winded affair. You can also have too much content and too many versions which will cause you a headache and your website to bloat, taking away any benefit you tried to provide in the first place. So what's the answer? Ready for the secret weapon? You can use both. Time for what I call the truly interactive treatment or TIT for short. Actually, that's not a good name at all now I look at it. Forget that. Moving swiftly on. There are different times you could use both, so let's look at a couple. The first is just design preference. For example, if we were building a hero image for our website, I'm just going to bung some space in here, go to background settings and pop in an image. Let's pretend that we want anybody who visits our website to be greeted by a picture of a desktop, this one here. I'm just using a stock image for this, nothing fancy. So somebody visits our website and they see this image on a computer and then they switch over to mobile and they're going to see the same image. The problem now is that it's going to be condensed really, really small on our mobile viewport. Either that or it's going to be so zoomed in that it's not going to make any sense. So one way to get around this using adaptive web design would be to create a separate hero section for our mobile visitors. For example, I could simply duplicate this section and this will work in any decent WordPress theme. You don't have to be using Cadence, I'm just doing that for this example. But any decent theme will allow you to control visibility settings. So let's say that for this one, we want this to be hidden on desktop and tablet, whereas this one just here, we want to be hidden on mobile. Now what we could do is we could actually change our image over. So if I switch this image and I'll choose this one of a phone, now when somebody visits on mobile, they're going to see this, not this. And when they visit on desktop, they'll see this and not this. I could also change this image to be a cover size while leaving the one on desktop to be set at contain. Something that just wouldn't look right on this view. However, when we switch over to mobile, Suddenly, this looks a whole lot better. Now, to show you what I mean, if I actually preview this page on a desktop, we can only see this image. We don't see the one of the mobile that we just created. Likewise, if I switch over to my mobile and share that with you, so on our mobile, we now only see the mobile image. We don't see the one of the desktop background. That is an example of us using adaptive web design. 
If I switch over now to this website, which I recently just redesigned for a client, moving it from Elemental over to Cadence. And if you'd like to see how I did that, it's on my YouTube channel. We can see here that for this hero image, we only have the one. Now, when we look at this on mobile, it works well as a responsive web design layout. Again, we will take a look at that at a moment on the actual mobile, so you'll see it properly. But down here, this is a great example of where we actually need to use adaptive web design as an easy way to get around a bit of a problem. I'm talking about this section just here. If we have a look at this, so if we go down, you'll now see that we only have the one section visible on the front end of the website. And it's this lovely looking parallax effect, except this isn't a parallax at all, because if we come back to here, we will see that this is set as a fixed image attachment. If I change this over to parallax and then preview it, you'll notice that when I scroll down, it's not working in the same way. We can't see the top of my client, Alison's head. The image is cutting off. So a way to get around this is to switch it over to being fixed. The problem there is that fixed only works on desktop. It doesn't work on mobile, so it just wouldn't look right. So while this gives us the effect that we want exactly on the front end of our desktop view, it's just not going to work on mobile. So to get around that, we can do the same thing that you just saw a minute ago. Duplicate the sections, make sure that under the visibility settings, one is only visible on mobile while the other is only visible on desktop and tablet. And then here under background settings, you'll see that for the mobile, it's set on a parallax. And if we take a look at it on my phone, on the mobile, as we go down, we will see that it, we have that brilliant parallax effect that we wouldn't have got if we had used the fixed element. To show you what that looks like, if we come back here onto the desktop, under this mobile view, if I change it over to fixed, and I get that warning saying it's not gonna work, and I briefly update this, when we now refresh on the mobile, you're gonna see that this looks terrible. It's not gonna work at all. So I'm gonna switch it back, refresh on the mobile, and there we go. It's back to working how we want. Another perfect example of how responsive web design doesn't always do it. Sometimes you need to use adaptive. But as for the rest of the website, as we saw, this works perfectly on a responsive web design layout. Everything's scaling perfectly down to the viewport size required. When you use these two together, it can bring together a website that's gonna look beautiful, clean, and simple to all of your website visitors, no matter what device it is that they're actually looking at it on. Whether it's a big desktop monitor, whether it's a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile, and we all know how many different size mobiles there are now. So my advice, use responsive web design wherever you can. Things should resize for you really well as long as you're not using absolute units. And in my other videos, I'm gonna go into that side of things in a lot more detail for you. But when you do come across something that just doesn't quite look right, when you switch over to different viewport sizes, that's when you can use adaptive web design. You can give yourself and your website visitors the design that you really want. So there we go, thank you for watching. Hopefully you now know the difference between responsive and adaptive web design, and you've seen how to use those visibility settings to create different layouts for the different device types when you need to. Please make sure to subscribe because in my next videos, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit more about responsive web design so that you can just automatically get things to scale for you across the different devices without having to put in loads of time and effort. You don't wanna miss out. Thanks again, see you on the next one.